everyone, Romy here with this segment I'm calling Standing Desks, the top five not frequently asked questions. So by the time this video ends, I'm hoping you have a better sense of things you should be considering when you look into buying a desk or a standing desk specifically. Uh, the key topics I will be covering today are around height, the height of the desk, how high it goes, how low it goes, um, frame. What's the frame like? I know we talk about weight, but what does it actually look like underneath? Uh, size. Uh, you know, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that show desks, but they don't talk about what size you're looking at when you're looking at these videos. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to look a little more into that. Uh, control placement. Essentially, up, down for this desk. They're actually on the desk. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then value, the value of the desk. Everyone thinks about price. But value doesn't always mean price. So let's jump right in. Actually, before I jump into those topics, I want to give you a brief history into the experiences I've gone through leading up to today. So um, over the course of 15 years, I've been working behind desks. You know, in my early 20s, I was an engineer. Eventually, I became a product manager. And back then, I had the good fortune of working at one of those big companies that had uh, in-house ergonomic experts. And those experts would teach me, this is how you sit. This is the right level of your desk. This is the right positioning and level of your monitor. Your elbows must be like 90 degrees. Your wrist should be like this. Uh, you know, your feet should be located in this placement. Uh, your desk needs to be leveled this way if you're seated this way if you're standing. And if you're young and watching this, we didn't have the luxury of like pressing buttons to go from sitting position to standing position. We actually had pegboards, if you will, that you would take the desk and you would shove it into these pegs. That they're not like pegboards, they're, they're like steel frames. You put it in there and once that your desk is in that, in that kind of height, that is your height for a while until you can have someone in facilities help you out again. And so back then it really didn't matter. I was in my early 20s. I would code, I would slouch, I would do whatever with my body. I would be in weird positions and I would, I would totally be okay, right? There was like no lower back pain. My elbows were okay, et cetera, because I was in my 20s. But over time, that started to change. Uh, I remember uh, I got into PC gaming at home and I was on a budget. So I started using my dining table and dining chair as my gaming station and it was okay at first but eventually i started to notice that my right elbow started producing a pain to the point where actually you'll see my left arm can go straight and my right arm cannot go all the way straight like you see how it's kind of stuck here this is me trying to force it to go straight it was i think back in the day it was worse it was like this and i thought i could bounce back because i was young but as you can see some of it has stuck with me and you know, my hope is that as you watch this video, you start thinking about the different points I bring up and how important it is to invest in the proper working space for you in terms of chair and desk. Uh, so you don't have to go through some of the same things that I've gone through. So now let's really get to the topics. So on to topic one, height. Uh, you know, something a lot of people focus on when getting a standing desk is, does it go up? and does it go down? Uh, and if it does, great. It's fulfilled our objective of being a standing desk. Um, but you know, one thing that people don't ever really think about or they don't talk about in YouTube videos is, does it go high enough or even more importantly, does it go low enough? So, you know, at the highest level, this desk is certainly higher than it needs to go for me. This is great, uh, but it might not be for you. So I'm 5'7". Um, and you will see that if I was probably like five inches taller, so think like over 6'3", uh, I might start having issues where my elbows wouldn't be at a 90 degree angle when working with the keyboard. Uh, and even more importantly, we get these desks and sure we can stand and work on them, but I think for a majority of us, we'll spend most of our time sitting down. And so even at 5'7", this desk doesn't go low enough for me my elbows end up having to angle up and it's been really, really uncomfortable. 
And so, you know, sure, you can rely on your chair to go higher or even use some butt padding. <laughs> I, I do that actually. Uh, but then you shift body problems from your elbow to your back. So that's not the right way to fix the situation. And by the way, I, I said I do use padding on my chair when I'm working here. Uh, I'm, I'm going through this video because this chair needs to go and this desk needs to go. These are not right for me. This is not healthy. I plan on working um, from home for another like half of year. And then after that, I do do night and weekend work. So this is an investment. Yeah, and I'll talk a little more about that later. Um, but, you know, as you think about the height of the desk, start doing your research and, and figure out how low the desk actually goes for you and if that's going to work out for your body. Um, this desk goes around, um, I should say this desk should probably be like two or three inches lower, honestly. And... Uh, to get to that point, I, I was looking at a bunch of desks online, and a lot of desks actually stop where this one stops. So before you go on Amazon and start looking at cheap standing desks, do your research. Amazon may not be the place for it. Um, do a quick Google search and find, like, you know, standing desks that go low. Do whatever you have to do to find out if it works out for you. Um, and... I'll also note, there's like a lot of YouTube videos where they show, oh, look, I took an Ikea cabinet, an Ikea cabinet, I put a kitchen a kitchen uh, counter wood slab, and it's beautiful, check it out. And you look at it, YouTube, you're like, wow, that table is beautiful, that's really nice. Uh, they are nice. Um, but I question whether or not the person behind the camera put a lot of thought into what that height was going to be when they're when they're seated. I know some of them are, are putting risers, etc. But it seems like they're putting risers between the cabinets and the wood slab in an effort to make sure that the desk doesn't move around. So sure, that's that's one reason why you need like something be, between those uh, between those surfaces. But you also want to make sure that you're putting risers that'll actually get the the wood slab to a place where your elbows are going to be 90 degrees. So before you jump into buying all this Ikea stuff, think about that as well. Next topic, the frame, right? The, the thing that's holding up the wood or the glass or whatever surface in your computer, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, when we think about frame, we think about how sturdy the frame is, you know, at, at its highest, does it wobble? How much weight can it support? Can it support 200 pounds? Can it support 300? Some of these support 350. Those are all actually really important. But one thing I didn't consider was the support beam underneath. So this desk actually has a support beam. Uh, and I, I gather that makes sure that the desk is a little sturdier, doesn't wobble, etc. But for me, it's really annoying because it prevents me from sitting properly. The support beam gets in my way when I want to stretch my legs. So, you know, if I want to be careful and not break my shin, I need to be very thoughtful about that support beam being there. The other thing is, is oh, actually, Romy, it's actually nice. It's a, it's a built-in um, footrest. Well, yes and no. I could actually rest my foot on there. But the problem is, is then my leg actually bumps into the top of the desk. So, you know, foot, and now my legs are like this, and it's bumping into the bottom of the desk. So that doesn't really work out for me either. And so maybe for you, you're okay with, um, I think they call it T-bar frames, where there's a pillar underneath that um, that keeps it sturdier. Uh, for me, it's annoying. So in my uh, in the desk that I ordered very recently, that will not be there. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm getting a, 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 I think it's called a C-frame, uh, in which case, the frame is kind of more geared to being weighted in the back for sturdiness and not using a support beam on the bottom. So, uh, yep, think about that before you purchase your desk. The next topic, size, and by size I mean uh, length and depth, okay? So, you know, this desk right here goes 24 inches deep and it goes 29 and a half inches wide. And if you look at my desk, what I have a 27 inch cinema display. Um, I think that's probably closer to a 29 or 30 inch monitor because there's like a lot of bevel on the side. I have uh, two MacBooks that are kind of half seated underneath the monitor, keyboard and mouse, or well, trackpad. I have a phone charger, I have a picture of my daughter, 
and I have her lamp. And so these are all situated on this desk. And luckily, it fits. Um, it, you'll see that if I charge my phone here, it'll actually overlap with the lamp or the picture. And so, you know, long story short, I'm starting to run out of space. So one thing you should consider is if this desk is this long, would this fulfill the things you would want to put on your desks? So I'm also showing you, uh, you know, Uplift Desk, which by the way is that I'm actually getting a desk from Uplift and they're not promoting this video. It's my first video ever. Ain't no one promoting this. Um, but the reason why I want Uplift Desk was because it fulfilled some of the things that I just talked about earlier. Uh, a frame that supports weight is sturdy and doesn't have the T-bar, you know, the support beam on the bottom. But also they had some really nice um, lengths that I could choose from. And so I will be getting a desk that is actually deeper at 30 inches versus 24. So that'll give me more space between monitor, keyboard, and things I need to put in between. I could even like move my, my keyboard forward and write on paper. I could do that now, but it gets a little, I have to move things around to, to do that. But also, it'll be longer. So in this video, I'll show you what it looks like, um, you know, between, if this desk were like 60 inches long, again, it's 29 and a half, right? right now, if it were 60 inches long, then if it were 72 inches long. Um, and the reason why you would prob probably want a longer desk is maybe you have two monitors, right? Or maybe you have a, a desktop workstation that you want to put on your desk. There's like no way that's fitting on this desk right now, at least comfortably. Um, maybe you actually want your right side to be your computer workstation and on your left side, that's where it's like pen and paper. So hopefully, you know, you could like pause on this video and look at what I do with the measuring stick and, and get a sense of, okay, well, Romy has a 27 inch display. He has a lamp, a mouse and a keyboard. He has MacBooks and I could see how he's already running out of room there. Based on my workstation, I would need X, Y, Z. And so I think I would need a little more space or maybe less space. So that's up for you to decide based on your needs, but um, I didn't see a lot of YouTube videos out there talking about size and hopefully this helps you out. Now on to um, control placement. So, you know, I have control, for this desk, the controls are at the top. It's nice, it's, it's easy to get to, it's flush. But, you know, I worked at another company before where we had standing desks. They didn't have um, memory positions, it was like a toggle. Up, down, it was like a lever. And they were kind of hanging below the desk and it never got in my way. I never found it to be a problem. Sure, I didn't remember, um, you know, height and seated positions, but it worked. You know, one thing that I didn't realize was going to be an issue with controls being at the top of the desk was that, especially for a small desk like this, it gets in the way. So the reason why I actually don't have a mouse pad on this desk is because if I have a mouse pad on this desk, it interferes with the control panel. And sure, there's a, a, a button where I can lock it so that the desk doesn't go up or down. But that's not the problem. The problem is, is when I do want to bring it up, I, I press this button here to unlock it. And then I have to lift the mouse pad up and I have to press the button, let it go up. Then I put the mouse pad down and lock it again. All to say that it, it really gets in the way. So, you know, when you're looking at your next desk, there are some really nice desks out there that are like $2,000. I'm not getting a $2,000 desk, but some of them actually have the panels at the very top. Um, I bet you if those desks are super long, like if you get a long version of those desks, which even will take you farther out, like 2,500, um, you might be okay because now you have a lot of room here on the right. Um, but if you're getting like those standard desks that are like around this size, I would really seriously reconsider whether or not you want buttons at the top here. It'll take away from um, like really great desk real estate. And finally, my last topic is value. You know, I think um, a lot of people think value is price, right? And I, I, I kind of used to think that way. And so actually, the standing desk is a good example of that. I, I needed a standing desk roughly three years ago because I was going to start working remotely uh, more frequently. And Costco had a great deal. Actually, I got this desk from Costco. I think it was 200 at most $250, which was like a steal, right? Back then, standing desks weren't as popular. So I got it and I used it and it worked fine in the beginning because I wasn't permanently working from home. So I didn't really feel the, the neck issues, the elbow issues, the back issues. 
Um, but, you know, had I known everything I know today, I would have spent two or three times more money on a desk that would be great for my body. And so the way I think about value is, for example, like a bed. I'll, I'll invest a good amount of money on a bed because I know I'm spending a lot of time on there, right? Eight hours a night. That's a lot of your, your lifetime just in one location. So you should invest in a bed that's great for you, your health, and your body. Um, another thing, I will invest in a good TV. I know I spend a lot of time in front of the TV. And so, uh, and I know they'll, uh, I'll keep them around for a long time. So will I spend $1,500 on a 60, 70, 75 inch TV, maybe $2,000? Sure. Cause I know I'm going to get a lot of bang for my buck over time. I would have spread, if you spread out those payments, it becomes nothing per day, right? Because I'll keep that TV seven, eight, nine years. Uh, and I'll enjoy it and I'll be using it a lot. Um, so now that I'm working at home a lot, I have to think about the desk in that perspective. And I think you should too. I'm spending roughly eight, nine, 10 hours a day at, at home working from this very desk. And so if you can think about, you know, what this chair is doing to me, what the elbow placement is doing to me, what the neck placement is doing with the, with the monitor, et cetera. It's taking a toll on my body. And if there's one thing that we should really, really be valuing is our health and our body. And so as you go out and start looking at desks, my recommendation is you don't go to Amazon.com and start looking at standing desks and just look at star rating and look at star rating the price and consider that as value. Do your homework. Think about some of the things I talked about. Figure out where, like, how high a desk would need to be to fulfill the 90-degree elbow roll. Think about if you need monitor arms. Think about what chair you're going to use. This is a $50 um, Amazon chair, and uh, it looks good, right? On Amazon, you just look at it, and you're like, that looks good, and you don't actually go to a store and sit on it, etc. cetera. Um, but it's, it's not great on the back. It's like mesh. It's like, oh, Aeron's have mesh. No, it's, it's not the same. The foam on, on Amazon, it looks like the foam actually is puffy. So like, oh, that's got to be comfortable. It's like sitting on marshmallows, right? Well, over time, the, the, the foam starts to like wither away or something. And now it's like super flat. Um, so these are all things that, you know, had I known before, I wouldn't have purchased these products. They, they work for a short amount of time, but they're, they're not great long-term solutions. And if you think about it, um, by going quote unquote cheap earlier, I'm actually setting myself out even more money. I'm quite frankly, I'm disappointed that I'm going to lose $50 on this chair. I'll lose 250 max on, on this desk. That's $300. That's a lot of money. Um, but you know, the way I think about it is it's even going to be more money if my health starts deteriorating because of this setup, uh, and, and continuing to use this for a long period of time. So, you know, if you want to save yourself $300, Listen to this YouTube video, maybe watch it again, paper and pen. Think about the things you should consider as you go out and buy a desk. Uh, instead of spending $300 in the beginning, spend maybe $900, $1,000, maybe $1,500, whatever, whatever uh, fits your budget. Um, but, you know, purchase things that are going to be great for your body, your setup, uh, and last you a long, a longer, honestly, a longer period of time. Uh, I hope this video really helped you. If it did, please like it. Uh, and um, I plan on doing a, a quick video on my new desk layer and a quick video on my new chair. So stay tuned.